This weekend, Jurassic Park opened to a record box office. Steven Spielberg's dinosaur epic is the movie to see this summer because 65 million years after extinction, Spielberg has brought them back alive. We asked two paleontologists to act as our film reviewer today. Dale Russell is in Ottawa. He's with the Canadian Museum of Nature. And in Toronto, Hans-Dieter Seuss, a paleontologist with the Royal Ontario Museum. Okay, Dr. Russell, thumbs up or down? Uh, one claw up, please. <laughs> and Dr. Seuss, did you like it as well? Yeah, two thumbs up, definitely. Oh, great. Now, let's talk about Spielberg made a big deal of how he wanted to get it right. Did he get it right, Dr. Russell? Were the dinosaurs as one might think they would look? I think the impressions were pretty interesting. Uh, the details were not there, uh, but the overall effects were quite, quite striking. Did your jaw drop open when you saw them? Many times. Yeah, Dr. <laughs> Seuss, what about you? Because I thought Sam Neill, the actor, you know, took it quite well. Yeah, except he wasn't particularly representative of paleontologists. Also, my main problem with the human cast in this movie was the rather sexist portrayal of women. Uh, the woman paleontol women paleontologists, particularly our colleagues, are very resourceful, gutsy women. So I thought that Laura Dern sort of played a somewhat wimpy character in this movie. <laughs> what about the dinosaurs, Dr. Seuss? Did they impress you? Were they realistic? Yeah, uh, the only problems that I had were with the Velociraptor and the Dilophosaurus. There, the details were somewhat questionable. The Velociraptor was too big, and the Dilophosaurus certainly didn't spit venom. Now, the raptor was the one, Dr. Russell, correct me if I'm wrong, that opened the door? Yes, that's true. Now, is that possible? Uh, from my point of view, I would really doubt it, because what we, um, the impression of the brain is preserved within the skull, so we can get a pretty good idea of the brain body proportions, and these scale out to um, a level of behavioral complexity, something like that of a chicken. And with mental equipment like that, I would tend to seriously doubt that a velociraptor could uh, think through sufficiently to open a door latch, and I would think that's not indicated. Dr. Seuss, what do you think? Well, I'm, I'm still quite certain that these animals were quite comparable to birds in levels of behavioral complexity and intelligence, so with some trial and error, it probably could have pried the door open after some time. Wow. Now let's look, Dr. Russell, at the, at the mm -hmm. premise here, which was that these dinosaurs were cloned from DNA that was got from insects that were trapped in amber 65 mm -hmm. million years ago. Now, is that possible? Oh, yes, it's possible. And not only is it possible, it is actual. You're kidding. What you mean? So, so the movie is realistic? Uh, well, not in terms of portraying the technical problems involved, because uh, as my colleague and I have discussed earlier, uh, linking up a billion base pairs from a few fragments of DNA is a tremendous problem. And uh, the geneticists I've talked to say that we won't be able to know whether we can do it or not for a long time to come. So come back in uh, 100 years for Jurassic Park Revisited, and we'll give you uh, a best guess as to whether the technology is available to do it then. And Dr. Seuss, do you agree? Is this possible? No, I don't think it will work in the foreseeable future because the amounts of DNA that could be recovered would be really minute and even though we're able to extract DNA from insects and fossil plants I don't think that that's going to happen for dinosaurs anytime soon. But we certainly see a lot of genetic manipulation going on in fact that's that's one of the morals of the story isn't it Dr. Russell I mean the Jeff Goldblum character mm -hmm. who's that crazed uh, mathematician a chaos theory says at one point you know essentially you shouldn't be fooling with mother nature. Well, I think humankind has always been uh, fooling with Mother Nature. Um, I think personally that the dinosaur ecosystems were on a lower level of complexity than the present one, so I think we'd have a very difficult time uh, maintaining dinosaur, dinosaurs in anything but an environmental uh, environment like a zoo. I don't think dinosaurs would pose a threat to us today any more than the Australian megafauna, or the kangaroos and the wombats and things uh, provide a threat to uh, ecosystems in Africa. Hmm. They sure were scary in the movie, though. They sure were. Now, Dr. <laughs> Seuss, if, if you were uh, a paleontologist looking at these dinosaurs the first time, I mean, if you were to visit Jurassic Park, how excited do you think you'd be? <laughs> oh, I would be incredibly excited. And I thought that Sam Neill's character actually very nicely portrayed this. I would also go up to this dinosaur and listen to it breathe and feel its skin and so on. Because, you know, we look just at the fossil remains, and it would be really wonderful to see an actual living dinosaur. So is this, gun, is this done good for your field, Dr. Russell, or does it trivialize it? Oh, I don't think it trivializes it. I think um, it opens people's imaginations to the world of the dinosaurs, and what's happened to uh, Hans and I is effectively uh, practically $100 million of uh, public awareness elevation 
which I hope will help us in our research in the future. And what did you think, Dr. Russell, of the, of the portrayal of the paleontologist? I mean, the Sam Neill character, mm -hmm. I found, you know, sweet, a little distracted, but, you know, kind of a, you know, deep down underneath a brave and somewhat sexy guy. Uh, well, I think uh, paleontologists are just as complicated as other people are and just as interesting. And um, I felt that um, the character of Dr. Alan Grant wasn't as interesting as I find the character of my colleagues. Um, I know there wasn't much scope and he, we don't want to compete with dinosaurs in a movie that's about dinosaurs. But uh, I think my colleagues are more interesting than Dr. Grant. And you know the <laughs> chap that the Sam Neill character was based on, is that right? Well, that's Dr. Horner, I understand, from uh, the Museum of the Rockies. And uh, Jack's got a lot to say and he's uh, had a very rich and varied experience. I, I think that Jack could uh, portray a much more interesting character on his own. <laughs> Isn't that a riot? But all in all, you're happy with the movie? You don't mind Hollywood interfering on in your turf, Dr. Seuss? No, I certainly don't, particularly since this movie very nicely conveyed the magic of dinosaurs to the general public. So yeah. that's a good thing.